Hi everyone. I love to create textures with watercolor and today's video is a follow-up to the last one where I matched colors using paint samples from the hardware store. My husband and I are building a house so we're spending a lot of time there and last week I found a display with free floor and countertop samples. What a fun way to practice textures. First I'm going to do some underpainting for each sample. If you can establish this first color accurately, I think you're at least 75% of the way there with most of these textures. With each one, I'm trying to mix the lightest component of each texture. The first one is kind of a terracotta reddish brown, and the second one is a deep golden color. I like to recycle paint if I can, so I'm adding some colors to the one that I just used. Most of the underpainting I'm doing with these samples is flat, but every texture is different. These next samples are tougher, and I'll start those while the others dry. I've sped up the video a little. Each sample took about 10 minutes from start to finish. I love the speckled one, and I'm doing the greenish color behind the specks. Each of these colors will dry a shade or two lighter than what they look like when they're wet. The second one here starts with a color that's hard to describe. I'm working as quickly as I can, so if I had to do this one over again, I might make it a little bluer. I'm going to spend more time with this last one because it has a cloudy appearance that I think I can create with the wet into wet technique. I'll be dropping some purples, blues, oranges, and yellows onto the wet surface and then I'll let them mingle. The colors will change a lot as I work on this and as they dry, but the effect will be soft and blurry. It's just a matter of adding the right colors at the right time. And yeah, that's easy for me to say, but I'm not trying to duplicate these textures exactly. I just want to get close. If some areas are too dark, it's easy to suck them up with a dry brush. Okay, the paint on the other side is dry now. This sample has a cracked texture and the lines aren't black, they're more of a warm brown. I'm sort of drawing the thin lines using a number one round brush and as little paint as possible for extra control. Some lines are darker than others, so I'll start out with the dark lines, and as the paint runs out of the brush, the lines will naturally become lighter. So I'm trying to use this to my advantage here. Again, I'm not trying to duplicate these shapes exactly. No need to drive myself crazy here, but I want to capture the general appearance and colors. This crackle texture made me feel like I was drawing a map. It's hard to see, but toward the end I'm making tiny paint splatters by flicking my wet brush over the paper. And that made a few specks. Then I'm just adding some variety to the lines, making some of them wider and darker. Not bad for a very quick texture. The yellow wood grain sample has some greenish undertones, so I'm mixing a light glaze. I'm using my fuzzy number six round brush for a more natural, slightly uneven look. That brush is my secret weapon for creating textures. I've had it for 13 years. Its bristles are ruined and fuzz out in all directions, but that's what makes it great. I can use it to create lots of parallel lines, little dots, or a soft, delicate mist. It's just perfect for wood grain. Do not throw away your messed up brushes because normal brushes can't do this. 
Time to paint some of the bigger speckles. Most of them are blue or rusty colors. I'm back to using my number one round brush here. As usual, I'm not knocking myself out to get every speck exactly the way I see it. Textures are often in the background. Unless they seem incredibly important for some reason, it's not 100% necessary to duplicate them exactly. I'm using the tip of the brush to dot on some smaller specks. This sample was really fun. As a painter, my strategy is this. I don't want to work super hard on things that don't matter. If I'm painting a portrait, I will spend an entire day obsessing over a nose because noses are incredibly important. But time is money and I won't take forever painting the exact crack pattern on some rock in the background. But you know what? I'll get pretty close. I'm using the tips of the fuzzy brush to make the tiniest dots. This is really so satisfying. I used to like biology class because, isn't it obvious, I loved looking under a microscope and drawing super detailed diagrams. I don't like to brag, but they were awesome. You wanted me to be your lab partner. Finally, I'm gonna to touch up the biggest shapes. If I could do this again, I think I'd make the background less green. Other than that, I really like this texture. It's hard to see, but there are some orange undertones in this rough texture, so I'm going to use the dry brush technique with my fuzzy brush. I'm using just a tiny amount of paint and sort of dusting it over the surface. Watercolor paper has a texture or tooth, and you can see it when I do this. And I'll use the same color on the cloudy sample. I'm softly dusting more pigment on the paper in little circles. Back to that rough texture. I'm using the same technique, but this time with green. It's an unusual color combination and texture. The idea here is to be able to see specks of all three colors, green, orange, and the background color. Of the six samples, this is my weakest one. I thought it would be the easiest, but I'm going to end up overworking it. Still, with a texture like this, who's gonna know? So here's the problem. It's getting too dark. I'm trying to lighten the most obvious dark blobs with a damp paper towel, but that doesn't help it much. I'll return to this later. While that one calms down, I'm going to fiddle around with a cloudy sample. Just a little more purple. Sometimes I'll smudge things with my finger or a paper towel if they're too dark. Back to the yellow one. I'm mixing the orangey lines. This wood grain is very precise. I'm using the number one round brush again. I like these for small details. I get mine from American Painter. They're cheap and I buy them by the dozen and I go through one a month. I use retired brushes for tiny textures the way I do with my fuzzy brush. I'm not sure if they're still making these, but I have enough to last me at least a couple of years and maybe by then they'll have an alternative brush ready to go if I need one. I'm adding some more intensely dark lines here. The finishing touches on any texture are almost always the most fun. I'm feeling rushed, so my hand's natural inclination to make gentle curves is hard to fight. I'm using designer's gouache and permanent white to create a few highlights. I use this in maybe 5% of my paintings, only when I have no other choice. Because in transparent watercolor, this is technically cheating, and I like to stay as transparent as possible. 
It's basically an opaque white watercolor. Sometimes it's the only solution. I can dilute it to a translucent white or tint it with color and it will cover places that are too dark. Speaking of dark, here's another layer for the dark wood grain. This is a mixture of brown and purple. I'll do one final layer after this. I don't want to overdo it. I want to be able to see parts of all the layers. Back to our problem child. I'm attempting to lighten it with a little white, kind of dotting it on. Sometimes with a texture, I just have to say good enough for what it is, especially if this is part of a background pillow, a concrete block, or a tweed jacket. It's not perfect, but it's basically there. If I could do this again, I'd make the background warmer and the dry brush colors lighter. No big deal though. And here's the finished sample. I'm dusting on some white because why not? It creates a milky, cloudy look. Close enough. That was a tough one. And now some final dark lines. This time I'm using my number one brush for more control. I think I nailed this one. The ones on the left side are pretty right on and would be even better if I gave them more time. The other side's a bit shakier, but still fine. This exercise is really good practice and surprisingly challenging. Have fun with this one and don't get too uptight about it. By the way, my painting Allure was selected for this year's splash book. This edition is all about creating textures with watercolor and it's out this month. I've linked to it below along with a list of my supplies. Thanks a lot for watching.